Hey guys, welcome back to our repair guys. In today's video guys, we're going to show you how to remove or replace camshafts on Hyundai. Uh, Elantra, Hyundai Tucson, that engine's been used in many vehicles. It's a 1.8 ANU engine. Uh, the 2.0, I think the procedure will be the same, but just double check everything. So, we have more than 200 videos guys on this car. Please subscribe, give a like, drop a comment if you need help with anything. Also check out and follow us on our official Facebook page, Auto Repair Guys. So let's go ahead, start on it and show you what needs to be done now. So the first step will be to drain the oil out of the oil pan so that way we don't make a mess when we remove it. Even though we will drain the oil, get the cardboard or something like that because it will keep dripping oil once you remove the oil pan. So 17 millimeter socket and we'll remove the oil plug now. <laughs> After that we will let it drain for a few minutes and once it's empty we'll come back to it. Okay, we're ready to install the drain plug now. So next we'll need a 10 mm socket and we'll be removing that plastic there, otherwise we'll not be able to remove the open. On the side. Okay, and it came out of there. Next you can see that plastic will need to be removed because there is bolts underneath it. So we'll be using the same 10 millimeter, uh, well 12, 12 millimeter now. Okay. We'll remove that, uh, that plate right there that connects to the bell housing. Okay, like that. And you have to be careful not to drop on you towards the end, not to leak oil on you, wear glasses, eye protection. That impact is pretty handy, it saves you so much time. Now the open is stuck, it has silicone. I don't think it has a gasket, it's just a silicone. So you need to push a little bit more up, don't go down because you bend the oil pan.
Okay, let's see if it's going to get loose. Okay. You have some oil we need again. You can see how stuck it is. All the silicone will need to be cleaned as well. So you can see our pan is out of the way now. Uh, all that will need to be cleaned really good to make sure you don't have any silicone left when you are uh, ready to install the oil pan later. And also you need to clean the top surface of the pan here, not to be greasy at all. And you have to apply the silicone and just put it and install it on the car. So we use that impact here now, uh, half an inch impact, pretty powerful. All the tools that we use will be listed in the description of the video below the compressor. That little pancake compressor goes all the way to 165 PSI. So it will be amazing for that job because it will give us quite a bit of boost in the beginning so we can remove that bolt. Uh, like counterclockwise now to try to get the bolt loose. Okay, and you can see with just a little bit of air, okay, that crankshaft pulley bolt came out. Okay, now you can grab it, it's a keyed, keyed uh, crankshaft pulley, so it goes only one certain way, okay, and we pulled it out just like that. So the first step will be to remove uh, that uh, valve cover, you just pull it straight out, after that we need to pull the dipstick out. So you just pull it straight out. Okay, after that, we're going to disconnect all the wiring harness here. Pretty, pretty simple. So we need to go ahead, uh, disconnect the ignition coils one by one. You pull that gray piece back a little bit, press on it, and pull it out. Okay, next, you can see that hose, uh, that, that wiring harness is in the way there as well. This is for the exhaust VVT solenoid, so you need to disconnect it on the back side. Okay, you lift that thing up and you pull the wire out. Now we need to disconnect the wiring harness from the valve cover. With small pliers, okay, you can press the two things together so you don't damage the, the clamp. Okay, perfect. And you can see that wiring harness is out of the way now. So after that, these holes will need to be disconnected as well. And one more, two breather hoses. If those are stuck, you can gently move them left and right until they come loose. Careful not to break anything. Push on the metal piece to disconnect the camshaft position sensors. Okay, just like that. After that, we'll remove the camshaft position sensors. Both of them are interchangeable, so even if you forget which one is which, it doesn't matter how you install them. Okay, all the tools guys that we use and parts will be listed in the description of the video below, so please check it out. Now we'll disconnect all of the ignition coils one by one, removing the bolts and we'll pull them straight up. Okay, just like that. Now we need to start removing the valve cover. So we go around and we remove all the bolts with 10 millimeter socket. There are some inside there 
and you have to be very careful not to drop your tools inside. The ones towards the back we have to reach with the ratchet. Once you get them loose they go by hand pretty easy. So again guys we have more than 200 videos on this car if you need anything just let us know. I think we just have two more there. Okay, so all the bolts seem loose now. We're going to pick each one of them one by one. So that way we don't lose them, we don't drop them inside the engine. Once you remove the cover it's very important. Okay, perfect. Now that uh, valve cover might be a little bit stuck. So if it's stuck you can help it a little bit with a screwdriver. But you have to be careful not to crack it. Okay, you can see the valve cover came out. The gasket is still stuck on the cylinder head. Okay. And the gasket started coming off too. So the next, the, what we're going to do next, we'll remove the intake, okay. You do not have to do that for that work, but we'll be, we'll be removing the cylinder head because we have to do some uh, internal work as well. So we'll remove the intake, but uh, for, that, for that thing, if you see the intake missing, okay, that's why it's missing, but you do not have to do that. You can see the intake is out of the way, so we can show you a little bit better how to remove the alternator too. That bolt right here will need to be loose. On the side right here with the 12 millimeter, you have another bolt that you need to get loose and after that you get that bolt loose. This is the manual tensioner and the belt will come off. We have the video on the channel if you want to see how to remove the belt. Uh, most of you will know so we didn't, uh, we didn't include it in this one, we already did it earlier. And you have to make sure your battery is disconnected before you proceed removing the alternator because otherwise you can catch your car on fire or burn the car computer. Now that 12 millimeter bolt on the side for the tensioner will need to be removed, that way we can remove the alternator. Okay, it came out, now we need to disconnect the wires. This one you press in and pull it out. Okay, it came loose. Now this is a nut there with 12 millimeter. You need to open the cap and remove the nut. After that we need to disconnect the wire that's holding there 
and we can pull it out. So next we will need to support the engine from the bottom so we can raise it a little bit and disconnect the engine mount that way we can remove the pulley for the water pump and we start removing the side cover. Okay so we have the uh, wood box there so we don't damage anything underneath and we barely supported it and jacked it only, only like half an inch to an inch up that way it will not have any pressure on the mount. 17 millimeters. Okay, we'll remove the bolt next, and we'll leave the last nut. Okay, now we have to be very careful on the last nut, because if it starts dropping, we have to raise it up a little bit. Okay, and we can still raise it just a little bit, because it's caught in the thread there. Now we will remove these bolts on the water pump pulley with a 10 mm socket. And just a quick tip before we start the work. When you still have the belt on, okay, you can go ahead and break them loose because the belt will prevent the pulley from, uh, from turning. Ours are already loose, so we'll just go ahead and remove them now one by one. Okay, last bolt now, and we can pull the pulley out. Okay, just like that. This ground wire will need to be removed and later installed. Do not forget it, because if you do, your engine might not work. So now we need to remove that bolt with a 14 millimeter. Here, I think this one is just holding the hook, so it might not be, yep, it's not holding there, but it's in the way, so that way we can remove these two bolts, and we'll need to start removing all the bolts now that hold the side timing cover towards the cylinder head and the engine block. So that will be quite a bit of bolts removing now, guys. We'll start from this side and go all the way down, around, and come back. So you can see those are with 12 now. And usually once you break those loose, they go pretty easy. Most of them will go by hand. Okay, right there. Let me show you what they look like now. You can see it just like that. Okay, this one as well, and after that we have one, looks like this one is with a 14 millimeter.
you can see this one was pretty tight we have the torque specs for that we have a video for that guys probably we will share the torque specs for the cylinder head for the timing cover we have uh, videos so you feel free to check them out okay it gets stuck so with the socket usually they go pretty easy okay longer ball here and this timing cover has quite a few bolts so it's important to remember in which order you took them off so you can install the same bolts at the same place And while removing the bolts, to explain that silicone later will need to be cleaned and new silicone will need to be applied here and here once everything is put together. That way the valve cover will seal really good. Now we have the 14 millimeter there. And we don't even need to remove, uh, you can see we don't even need to remove the water pump for that. We can reach all the bolts that way. So we will have the whole car taken apart on the channel. Again, if you need anything, drop a comment. We'll try to, to make a video, guys. It might not be the same day, but we'll try to make one for you. Okay, now we have one right there next to the water pump. Okay, this one came out. Now we have uh, one more down there. We got loose. Some of them did not go so easy. I think there is some silicone in the thread too. Just trying to think what it is, but that side cover attaches to the cylinder head and the engine block by silicone. There is no gasket, so I assume silicone can get in one of the bolts and it will not come off so easy. Now we have a 10 millimeter right there in the middle. Okay, this is the 10 millimeter there. Now on the bottom, I already got those loose, not to waste your time. Okay, you can see this one here. Uh, okay, this one needs a little bit more. Okay, so let's pull it out. Now this one is loose. Four more here. One towards the back. Okay, one more came out, I'll try to shoot from here now so you can see a little bit better and we just have a few more now and we have one more hidden I think so it's always important to check make sure that you do not have any bolts because if you do and you try to pry it out you're going to crack it. So it's quite a bit of work, but it's doable by yourself. You can save yourself quite a bit of money. You have to make sure that you get everything right. Double, triple check everything when you put it together. So now this is 14 millimeters again. We have two big ones. And after that, this one is with 14 millimeter, and there is one more down there with 12. Okay, this one is coming off now. All the tools, guys, that we use will be listed in the description of the video below, so feel free to check it out. Okay, this one just came loose. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if it's going to come off or... Okay, we'll remove that in the way because we cannot remove the bolt and we don't want to <laughs> move the engine too much because it's on the jack. 
<laughs> there is a jack stand underneath, always, always use a jack stand. Alright, perfect. We have to remember that this one is there. Now pull the bolt out. Okay, this one here, I think it's a 14 as well. Ooh, that we'll need to remove in a little bit. Okay, now this one right here, looks like it's 14 probably, it could be 12, I don't know for sure, yep, it's a 14, so extension will be needed for this one or a deep socket. And hopefully that's all of them, we'll check and make sure that we don't have anything else. All the silicone is pretty, pretty tight. All the bolts are out of there as you can see. So it almost, as you can see, it's almost loose still. Holding a little bit here and there, there is a few, a few glides, so we'll need to make sure that it can come out. Okay, now we need to see how we're going to pull it up or down. So eventually it comes out, okay, nothing else holding there. So after we remove the timing cover, now this is the timing chain guys, we got to it. Uh, you need to bring the engine to TDC point, okay? TDC point is when cylinder number one is in the... Uh, uh, it cannot go more up, it's the position that it's about to start going down, between going up and down. So that's top dead center. Uh, we'll have a detailed video how to find it if you need help, but at TDC those pockets will be pointing towards, e towards each other. So this is the tensioner, okay, right there. 10 millimeter socket, two bolts, it's spring loaded, so be careful, it will kick out. We'll remove the top one first, that way the tensioner will turn counterclockwise because it, as I said it's spring loaded, you'll see in a second. Okay, you can see and our timing just got off, but that's fine, we'll be putting a new chain anyways. We we'll recommend using a new tensioner, new chain, and in some cases you can even put new uh, timing chain guides. I would recommend going the uh, whole way. In our case, we'll put new tensioner and new chain only. So now we can push that tensioner towards the back and pull the chain out of there. And that glide, I mean, my bad. Now we need to remove quite a few bolts. Okay, actually to remove the camshafts. We'll be using a 10 millimeter, we'll be using 12 until now. Okay, we can go ahead.
Now the way you remove all the parts will need to be installed in exactly the same order. So we will put everything in order. You can see you have numbers on top. It says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just remember that the 1 is on the very left. You cannot actually install it the wrong way. Do not drop the bolt like we did. Okay, it's down there. So there is nothing else holding the camshafts in place, so we can go ahead and remove one by one. Okay, so we have the camshafts now, we'll lubricate all the bearings uh, where it's contacting the cylinder head. All spots, everything should should be super super clean, no dust or anything like that. Okay, we'll install. We gotta make sure that everything is good with the uh, with the valve lifters as well. Okay, one is in. Now we're going to do the same thing with the oil on top. Okay. Perfect. Now, we need to do the second one here. Everything will be the same way now. Just lubricate it really good. Okay, like that. You have to be very generous on the oil. Now we'll get the caps and one by one, the way we remove them, we're going to install them. You, can, you have to clean on the bottom. That's where the bearings are. Lubricate those bearings. Okay, and put the cap on. Yeah, like that. Now, uh, we'll do the same thing for the rest of the caps here. The camshaft caps. Just clean, put them, and we'll get to the torque sequence in a minute. So we'll just get them tight by hand, okay, just to the point that they start to get tight, but do not get them tight. Okay, and we'll do that to the rest of them and get to the torque sequence. So now you have two kind of bolts. One is big, one is small. The small one is called M6, the big one is M8. The M6 bolts, the torque specs will be 11.8 to 13.7 Newton meters. The big ones, M8, will be 11.6 and will be my bad. M8 will be 18.6 to 22.6 Newton meters. So now the torque specs for those guys. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start with bolt number one, okay, which is this one here. I have our set at about uh, 22 Newton meters for this one. Okay, this is Number one, you can hear the click, do not go past the click. Okay, 
Okay, this is number two. Now we need to find number three, which is this bolt. Okay, right here. If you go past the click, it will be past the torque specs. Okay, perfect. Now, number four will be the one right here. Okay, number five, this one here. Okay, my torque wrench is, our torque wrench is messing up a little bit. Number six. Okay, this is number six now. Number seven will be the one over here. Number seven, eight. Nine here. Ten will be this one here. Ah, dog wrenches. It's in better days. Eleven here. Twelve on this side. Okay, now we need to find out which is number thirteen. This one here. Number fourteen. Number 15 now. now. Okay, this is number 15. Now we need to uh, go ahead and switch to the 10 millimeter socket. And you don't have to use, don't use extension. I'll be using extension, but if you use extension, you will mess up your torque a little bit. Uh, so uh, the correct way is not to use extension, but we lost our deep socket and I'll just set it just a little bit higher. Okay, in our case, M6 bolts need to be 11.8 to 13.7 Newton meters. So, I'll set ours quick, okay. Right there, and now we need to go with bolt number 16. Okay, give me a second, bolt number 16. Okay, click number 17. Number 18 will be the one here. I'll just try without the extension. Let me see if I can get them. Yeah. They will fit. Number 19. Okay, so that's number 19. I'll just recheck those because I used the extension. Okay, they're good. Now we need number 20, this one here. 21. 22 here. Twenty-three on this side. And we are getting towards the end. Twenty-three. Now we need to find twenty-four. Twenty-five. Okay, and let's see if we have more after that. I think this is it, guys. Okay, that's the last one. So from that point on, you have to uh, set the timing. You have to put everything together in reverse order with you apart. This is the end result, guys. Car runs and drives fine. All the videos, if you need help with the individual components, are on the channel, like setting the timing, installing the time cover in reverse order. All that is there, so thank you for watching. Please subscribe and many more videos, guys, to come to the channel.